Okay, so this is a quick intro to isotopes and radioactivity. Um, the two are related because uh, some, uh, but not all, uh, elements are radioactive. Okay, and the some that are and the some that aren't, there's a special name for the different forms of them. Um, now, uh, let's just deal with those. So the, um, the the types, different types of uh, elements, or maybe we'll change. Yeah, we'll change it. Not elements. Not elements. Different types of atoms of the same element. They are what we call isotopes. Okay, so that's what that's all about, the isotopes part. So, for example, um, you might have hydrogen, and you could have a hydrogen atom with a single proton and a single electron orbiting around it. That's one isotope of hydrogen. Um, we also have uh, another isotope of hydrogen, which has... A it doesn't have another proton, can't, otherwise it wouldn't be hydrogen, but it might have a neutron in there. That's another isotope of, of hydrogen. They're both the same element, but they're different atoms of the same element. So the, remember, the, na the, the name of the element, or the type of element, is defined by the number of protons in the nucleus. That should be balanced up by the number of electrons, otherwise it becomes an ion. Um, but the isotopes will have different numbers of neutrons in the nucleus. So for instance could have two which would be deuterium or three which would be tritium and you can see how that works. Now <clears throat> how we uh, how we write this is quite important. Um, if your atom is uh, element, sorry, if your element is element X you'll have a number up the top and a number down the bottom. So for instance uh, hydrogen as we had before will have one and one if it's this version because it's got one proton and uh, no neutrons. Um, if we had oh, this one down the bottom here which has got three this would be hydrogen um, with one down the bottom still but this time it would be four up the top giving uh, the total number of nucleons because remember a uh, uh, a nu neutron is a nucleon, and a proton is a nucleon. And there are four in this one, which is why we write the four. It's also why we call that the nucleon number sometimes. Nucleon number. Or mass number, because it gives the mass of the atom with the number of nucleons. Um, they might even say it is a mass of four atomic mass units, four AMUs. One AMU is the mass of a proton or a neutron. Um, roughly speaking. So uh, the other one is called the atomic number. Um, sometimes you might call it the element number, or but it's the number of um, number of protons, and that gives the element its name. So the number of protons in the element. Okay, and X is of course the uh, the symbol for the element. So uh, I'll give you one more example, um, which links into radioactivity. Uh, I'll just keep shrinking this down because it's so much fun. Uh, one more example that links into radioactivity. You have carbon, which is sixth on the periodic table. So it's going to have six down the bottom because that's the number of... But carbon-12, and here's, here's another isotope of carbon, is carbon-14. Carbon-14 is radioactive. It, it gives off radiation. So um, you can see that uh, this, this one here, which only has six neutrons, compared to this one, which has eight neutrons, um, there's, there's some, uh, something about having extra neutrons that causes it to be unstable. And what that means when it's unstable or radioactive, it means it wants to get down to the most stable state and it might emit some form of radiation to do so. Um, so, uh, in this case, 
um, for carbon. Carbon takes a bit of a pathway to get back to the most stable form of carbon, carbon-12. Um, but somewhere in the whole process it's got to go from 14 neutrons down to 12. So it might uh, lose two neutrons somehow um, through a roundabout process to get there. And that's radioactivity. Radioactivity is this instability of atoms that are prone to breaking down into other atoms or uh, to eject components. And we'll look at the types of radiation that can come out um, at, a, at another time. Let's just keep shrinking down because it's so much fun. Um, and uh, I won't get into the types of radiation now, but uh, here's another way to look at it. If this is your nucleus of an atom, um, you might have, uh, say, a whole bunch of neutrons, which I'm just going to colour in to be neutrally, you know, neutral, and a whole bunch of protons being positive. And you don't know when it's going to happen. It's a bit like the roll of a dice. It's a bit, I mean, statistically, you'll come up with uh, six, uh, one time out of every six. The same with radioactivity, um, over a set period of time, um, if you have, uh, say if the chance at any one moment is one in a thousand for that radioactive atom to give off radiation, um, then you have a thousand atoms and there the chances are you'll get one given off straight away. Um, but there's no guarantee because it's still a chance thing, it's like a dice, it's still possible to roll a dice um, and not get a six even if you roll it 50 times. It's the same way with radioactivity, it's statistical but it still um, has that chance of not uh, doing what you expect it to do. But in any case, this is our nucleus of a radioactive atom. Um, okay, and so that means it's unstable. Sometimes you might see a little asterisk to show something has got extra energy and is a bit unstable. And when we... I'm going to break from tradition and move like that. There we go. So somewhere during the process... Um, this this thing wants to uh, split up. Um, it, it's its radioactive nature makes it unstable. It wants to split into more stable components. It's a little bit like having bricks all stacked in a funny way. Um, and when when gravity happens, the bits will fall off, and you'll end up with a pile of bricks flat on the ground in the most stable position. So they'll now uh, won't be radioactive because they're comfortable just staying there. Okay, so with, with this atom here, it's unstable with these number of neutrons. So what might happen, as an example, is that one of the neutrons gets ejected out. Or, okay, let's, let's do it this way. We won't just do a neutron ejecting out. We're going to take two neutrons um, and two... Um, we're going to take two neutrons and two, two protons. And they're going to be ejected out. So what we'll then have... Is, um, is is something with two neutrons and two protons that has been ejected out, okay, and uh, and what what's left behind is this other bunch of two neutrons and two protons. So we can draw those in there as well. And typically, this would happen with a much larger atom. This is also, incidentally, fission. This is splitting apart the atom to get energy from it. Um, but there's our original one, and there's our split-off atom. So this is actually helium, and this is helium, isn't it? The nucleus, anyway, of a helium. Um, and that's basically radiation. That's what it is. It's things breaking apart. You have to think, um, if you have a whole sample of radioactive material, um, the misconception is that it just disappears. So when, say, this atom is radioactive, or, um, or the whole lot's radioactive, but when this one undergoes radioactive decay, which would be this process here, um, a lot of people think that it just disappears. But it's not the case. It's not disappearing. It's just changing into something else. So it might go, boom, now I'm orange. And I've given off a little bit of whatever I was, so that's come off. And then same thing might happen to another one here. Boom, this one here gives off a little bit and that turns into a different type of atom. And eventually um, the whole lot will change um, over time. Okay, so all these little radiation bits are occurring at times that we don't know, just uh, we can't predict which one will go, but the whole lot decays at a particular rate that we can uh, identify and observe so that we know different elements will have different radioactive elements 
um, will have particular uh, decay rates that can be predictable statistically. Okay, but only certain isotopes, so that's getting back to what isotopes are and, um, and, and seeing how they work. So only certain uh, isotopes, not all isotopes of each element are radioactive. And just for fun, I'm going to zoom back in so you can see our journey where we've come from. Lots of fun.